All right, we're moving right along with this project. So one of the things you need to do often with your project, your bento box, especially before you clean up, is give it the tilt test. So if I were to pick this up and tilt it this way, because when I hang it um, on a bulletin board, I'd like to hang all of them up and I do this and I staple it to the wall. If something falls out, it's not gonna be in your bento box. So you need to kind of tilt it and make sure that it's secure and maybe give it a slight little shake. So my stuff is in there. If it fell out, then you know what? I need to reattach it before putting it away for the day. So I've done my sushis. Um, you don't have to use the same colors that I've used. If you wanna use yellow or you have a different idea, feel free to do it, you guys. Next, I have two more boxes, so I'll show you two more different things, but if you have a different idea for a different food you wanna use, as long as it kinda of goes with our bento box theme, feel free to do it. So I'm gonna show you how to do a 3D carrot that pops up, because remember, we want it to pop out. If it was flat, a flat piece of paper stuck in there at the bottom, it would still be 2D, it would be flat. So we want everything to pop up. So how to make this really easy carrot is you just take a little rectangle, you take one corner and you fold it in. You kind of roll it in. Here, I'll move this out of the way. Roll it in. And then I need to take the other corner and also roll it in. What I'm trying to do is make a cone out of this rectangle so it's thinner down here and thicker up here. So I kind of need to roll it so it gets tight at this end but stays open. So think of like a snow cone kind of. I'm gonna find where that corner is on the outside, and I think it works best if you take a little piece of tape and just tape it like this. But that's gonna be the back because we don't wanna see that taped part. But now we kinda of have like this weird, these weird little cat ears here. So I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm just gonna gently kinda of cut that out. Okay, we just have an orange cone. So I want that like leafy, Part out of the carrot and this is one way to do it you guys if you have a different way or a different idea feel free to do it so I'm gonna cut just a little rectangle and then I'm going to cut just tiny little vertical lines but I'm not cutting it all the way through because if I cut it all the way through I would cut it off so I just got tiny little lines kind of looks like grass and then I'm going to attach it I'm gonna attach mine in the inside if you want to attach yours on the outside up to you I kind of like it on the inside and I'm gonna figure out which glue works best for me it might be the wet glue um, sometimes I like using the tape but you know I'm not gonna go haywire on the tape because it does tend to run out easily I'm gonna stick a piece of tape in there and then so I it didn't go all the way around so that's gonna be the back and if I wanted to bend these I could bend these if I wanted to I have to call that crimping there's so much you could do with paper Sky's the limit. You're the boss of the paper. Manipulate it and move it so it works for you. On my other one, I took a Sharpie and I drew little carrot lines. So, because carrots are kind of bumpy, like when they come out of the ground. And then I need to put these down how I want them. If you have a different fruit or vegetable that you want to do, you could do that. Glue those down. Remember, they need to pass the tilt test. Okay those are secure the last thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to do like noodles so what I've shown kids in the past is just how to glue noodles down in there but I've also had people put them in make like a bowl and put it in a bowl in there and have like a soup of noodles totally up to you okay so this is kind of the hard part is figuring out how to attach these string noodles I don't want a lake remember no big leg big mistake so this glue doesn't really work for the noodles. Tape is kind of difficult too because it doesn't really stick to the yarn. So I don't know guys, work what's, use what's best for you. What I like to do is just kind of do a line and your fingers might get kind of sticky doing this. And then take your yarn and just follow that line that you've just done. And you're gonna have to do this many times because it doesn't really look like super noodles if you have two of these pieces of yarn stuck in there. So there's one. I think it looks kind of cool if you do different colors of yarn. So I'm gonna have two different colors of noodle colors to put down to give it what I like to call some variation. Variation. Stick it down. Okay. If you're like, yeah, I got two colors. I'm done. This still looks really flat. You want it to kind of bulk out a little bit. So you want a nice good pile to stick in there. But remember, if you just lay it down like this, when I flip it over, that all is going to fall out. So I need to take my time on this one and really make it stick. So 
I got a lot of glue in there. I could see if this is going to stick. I might add some random drops in there and make it stick. It needs to stick. Okay, the last thing that you could do with your noodles is if you want to add some little pieces, green pieces, red pieces in there for sometimes noodles have vegetables in them or a seasoning. So you can take some tissue paper, you could crumble it up, you could glue it down in there just to give it a little more pop of color. You guys, if you don't want to do carrots or noodles, if you want to do like a salad, you can crumble these up and make a nice fluffy salad. If you have other ideas that fit with the bento box theme, then try it out. I've had kids in the past try to make a little, um, a, what are they called? Uh, fortune cookie, a fortune cookie. And I've read online on the interwebs that fortune cookies were American made cookies. I really don't know, but whenever you go to like a Chinese or Japanese restaurant, they seem to have fortune cookies. So that could be something you could try. If you have extra space right here and you want to fit something else next to your chopsticks, up to you. If you want to put some greasy stuff next to your sushi, you could do that to fill up your box. The fuller it looks, the kind of nicer, more complete it looks. So up to you guys. Have fun with this and think outside the box. It's going to be a good time.